All right, so let's talk about <clears throat> moment of inertia and the difference between area moment of inertia and mass moment of inertia because uh, I, as an undergrad, didn't quite understand the, the difference between and, and didn't quite notice the difference because we would call both of them I. Uh, and so, you know, sometimes we need uh, area moment of inertia. I think it makes sense that the area moment of inertia is a measure of how much area is away and how far away it is from a rotating axis, whereas the mass moment of inertia is a measure of how much mass is and how far it is away from the rot rotating axis. So uh, we'll use area moment of inertia in statics and in mechanics, but we'll use mass moment of inertia in dynamics and we call both of them I, and so that's why it's it's easy to get them mixed up and to get them confused. All right, the area of inertia is a measure of a beam's stiffness with respect to its cross-sectional area. Um, it's really, and I think we'll talk about this. No, maybe maybe we won't. It's really a resistance to bending. Resistance. To bending, whereas a uh, the mass moment of inertia is its resistance to rotation. It's how hard is it to rotate um, compared to its mass versus how hard is it to the area moment of inertia is how hard is is it to bend um, with respect to its cross sectional area. All right, so if we're looking at discrete particles and, and we're summing all of those up to find the area moment of inertia, we would take each particle's area and each particle's distance away from the, let me call this the bending axis. This is, I should say, the bending axis. For area moment of inertia, we would sum up all the areas times their distance away from the bending axis squared. Um, for the mass moment of inertia, we would sum up all of each particle's mass times the mass's uh, distance away from the rotating axis. Um, if they're not discrete, then we really need to do an integral. Uh, so do you see that if you want the um, moment of inertia about the x-axis, you would integrate all of these DAs and multiply it times their y squared because y is the perpendicular distance from their x-axis, right? Their y value is the perpendicular distance they are away from the x-axis. Uh, similarly, the, the i about the y-axis, we would take all the x distances squared times each one's a, or really integrate, x squared dA. Uh, similarly, for, to get the i about the x-axis, integrate y squared dm, i about the y-axis, integrate x squared dm. We're not going to do any of those integrations. We're going to be given the moments of inertia about common shapes. Okay, So, like this um, handout, this centroid, sorry, this centroid handout, Right here, these are the area moment of inertia, area moments of inertia about a quarter circle, a semicircle, a, a circle, a, a rectangle, a triangle. Right there. All right. Uh, these are the mass moment of inertias about objects. All right. The mass moment of inertia about the um, cylinder. Here's one we might use right here if we want the the um, mo moment of inertia. If it's rotating about the down the middle of that cylinder, um, moments of inertia about a thin circular disc. Uh, right here we go. Moment of inertia. Moment of inertia about um, a slender rod. Maybe we want the moment of inertia about the middle of a slender rod. Maybe we want moment of inertia about the end of a slender rod. A thin ring right here okay so uh, we we can we're given some or we know some moments of inertia about common shapes but be careful about which axes they are given about did you notice that be careful about which axes they are given about um, this is the ix about you know a, a bottom 
or that's I Y about there. This this is the I X and I Y about those X and Y axes. These are about the centroid. These are about the centroid. This right here is about the centroid. So, so be careful. Some of these are, are given, give us the moments of inertia about their centroids, but not this, not that right there. Those aren't the moments of inertia about the centroid. They're the moments of inertia about the base and the middle, the base and the side, okay? Uh, these are the I, Y, be careful. So this is the I, 1 12th ml squared is if we're rotating it about the middle, um, but one third ml squared if we're rotating about the end of a slender rod. All right, so for composite bodies, so if we can think about these as just lots of common shapes put together, sorry, let me not skip this, be careful about which axes they're given about because if you are given the eye about some some axis that you don't want and you want to move it to a new axis you need to use a parallel axis theorem and you, we would add a d squared right that's a parallel axis theorem for the um, area moment of inertia we if for the mass moment of inertia we would take the i given from the you know formula sheet but if we want to move it we would add an m d squared to get the moment of inertia that we really want all right and then for composite bodies, we just add up all the ix's of all the different shapes to get the ix of the composite body. For, for same thing with, with both of those. Now let's talk about this. We might be using the parallel axis theorem, so so we're really adding all the i plus a d squareds of one shape plus the i plus a d squared of the next shape plus the i plus a d squared of the next shape to get the total i of um, that composite body. Um, for I X's, our distance is going to be like a Y dimension. For the I Y, our distance is going to be the X dimension. So parallax term I plus A D squared, this would be I plus M D squared. Okay, let's talk about units because the units are different for each of these. The units for area moment inertia, inertia are something like distance to the fourth or, or maybe millimeters to the fourth or maybe inches to the fourth. The units for mass moment inertia are kilogram meters squared. Um, in English units, SI units, it gets ugly, but maybe slug um, inches squared or slug feet squared. When wipe might we use them? Uh, for uh, mechanics, we, we see it a lot, like F, FL over 48 um, EI, tau is VQ over IT, uh, whereas the, in dynamics, we'll see it in rotational moments and kinetic energy, I alpha, one half I, omega squared. And I think this is why we get confused, because it just, we just put it as an I right here. You know, we put it as an I, whoops, right here. Uh, but we got to know that these over here were mass moment inertia. These over here were area moment of, uh, moment of inertia. So let's real quickly just look at our rectangle. Let's, let's look at our rectangle. The IX of a rectangle from that formula sheet, but this is an easy one that you should uh, know and memorize. The IX is 112 BH cubed. The IY is 1 12th HP cubed, and these formulas are for the centroid. All right, so if we want the IX about this x-axis that's going through the middle, then that's what the formula gave us, 1 12th BH cubed. This would be 1 12th 16 10 cubed. The IX would be 13 33 inches to the fourth. That is the I about that x-axis. What is the area? So, so these are area moments of inertia. These are area moments of inertia. Because these are areas. And that's what we're doing in this class. We're, in this class, we're doing area moment of inertia. 
All right, here the IY from that formula sheet, what you probably could have guessed, is HB cubed. See how we switch the X and Y? We switch the height in the base. 1 12th, 10 16 cubed. The IY, 34 13 inches to the fourth. 34, 13 inches to the fourth. Does it make sense that its IY would be larger than its IX? Uh, I is the measure, is a, kind of a measure of how much area is away. And both of these have the same area, but do you see that in from the Y axis, you know, this area is, you know, eight inches away. This area is eight inches away versus about the X axis, the area only gets at a maximum, it gets five inches away. So, so it's like it has more area away from the axis. Uh, that's why its IY is larger. We'll get into this in mechanics. Um, it might be easier to bend it one way about the x-axis than it is to bend it about the y-axis. Okay, but what if for some reason it asked, for some reason we wanted to know, the area of inertia about these x and y axes for that rectangle, for that same rectangle, what's the i about this axis? What's the i about this axis? Well, uh, my formula sheet, and we could get some formulas, but my formula sheet only gives me the moment of inertia about the middle of a rectangle. See right here? Moment of inertia about the middle of the rectangle is 1 12th bh cubed. But I want the moment of inertia about this base of the rectangle, I'm going to use a parallel axis theorem. All right, I'm going to use a parallel axis theorem. I'm going to take the I that they give me, 1 12th bh cubed, 1 12th bh cubed, but that is the I about this axis. I want to move it to this axis. So I want to move it, I need to Use the parallax theorem, add AD squared. The A of the whole thing, 10 by 16. The D, the D is the perpendicular distance that we are moving, um, you know, for what we are given. We're given about this one. We want it about this one. What's perpendicular distance that we're moving that? We're moving that 5 inches. And don't forget to square that. If I was keeping up with my units, that, that would help me remember and realize I need to square that for my units to, to agree. This would be 5333 3, 3, 3 inches to the fourth. How about IY? Well, my formula gives me this IY, 1 12th HB cubed, uh, but I want to move it to this, so I need to move it at an AD squared. What's the D that I need to move it? 8 squared. All right. And this would be 13,653 inches to the fourth. Does it make sense that my IY was larger? Yeah, because there's a lot of area a lot further away from the Y axis than, you know, the farthest it gets away from the X axis. All right. All right. So let's try some composite bodies.